Now, the reason it didn't happen, folks, and if you've been following me on Twitter, you probably already know the situation. Uh, Yours truly and my wife were approached by, quote, authorities while we were, you know, having some breakfast in the morning at a public restaurant. Now, folks, I am not, this isn't really something new to me, to be completely honest with you. Uh, this is why I left the show the last time, to be completely honest with you. It had nothing to do with any goddamn trolls, for Christ's sake. Uh, but we were approached, and let me tell you, these were cocky sons of bitches. Uh, they came up right up to me. Well, <clears throat> my wife and I were sitting there dining uh, on some breakfast, you know. Uh, we were at a Mexican restaurant. I'm not going to say the name of it, but uh, we were there, and... Uh, Two sons of bitches started coming up. And let me tell you, uh, son of a bitch just came right up to me and said, Hey, ghost, how you doing? And to be honest with you, I thought it was a troll. I thought it was, oh, man, you know, I, I don't know. I thought it was something of that nature. So I was like, yeah, whatever. Okay, yeah. You know, what, what do you want? That sort of thing. And uh, went on to say, hey, uh, you know, yeah, if I were you, I would stop your little hobby. You know, uh, we're watching and monitoring your capitalist army and your little show that you have going on. They looked at my wife. Do you know that he has this little hobby of his? And my wife didn't say anything. So this asshole, basically there was one silent one, the other one doing all the goddamn talking. This son of a bitch actually gets one of the chips right there for the, had chips and salsa, you know what I'm saying, while waiting for the damn meal. This son of a bitch takes a chip, dips it in the goddamn salsa, and eats it, for Christ's sake, and tells me, oh, don't worry about it, we're following you, so on and so forth. So what this son of a bitch does, he takes a chip, dips it in the salsa, eats it, double dips, too, this son of a bitch double dipped the goddamn chip. I mean, this is a goddamn bureaucrat if I've ever seen one in my life. Now, this idiot didn't just, uh, you know, go away. I mean, they actually got a cable within our line of sight looking dead straight at us, all right? Now, of course, my wife is a little bit disturbed, to say the least, all right? And she goes right away for her cell phone and dials for the APD, the Austin Police Department. And believe it or not, uh, you know, an officer came in, and uh, we told him the situation, we pointed the uh, individuals out because, look, I mean, I didn't know if these were real uh, authorities or what, whatever. I, you know, I thought maybe they were troll stalkers. I mean, who, who the hell knows, for Christ's sake, right? So APD very kindly goes up to these gentlemen that are sitting in the goddamn restaurant. The restaurant's just kind of being cool about it. I mean, there was people there. They were just kind of looking out the side of their eye, you know what I mean, side of their eye out here. They go up to these sons of bitches. I don't know what was said, but these guys were so cocky. They were even, like, mouthing off to the cops, showed them some documentation, and told them to get out of their face. Cop comes back up to us and says, look, I don't know if you're some kind of a terrorist or what, but these guys are Homeland Security. They've given me Homeland Security credentials, and they say that, uh, by going up to them, by me as a police officer, going up to them that I'm impeding on their federal investigation. So, I mean, the cop couldn't do a goddamn thing. So, without without being said, me and the wife, we got the hell out of there as quick as we can, for Christ's sake. All right? <clears throat> and uh, basically came home. And, uh, you know, they basically had a talk about the situation at hand because, once again, here we go. And, look, I wasn't surprised when this happened. I mean, I'm, I'm not just doing this show. I want to be completely honest with you. I've said this, I believe, on the last broadcast this past Wednesday. And it's not an accident that uh, yours truly over here uh, knows so much information. All right? So anyway, I got home, me and the wife discussed it, and look, I didn't have a show yesterday just just, just basically because of that. 
So me and the wife discussed, you know, the options. Because, look, folks, at this point in time, these bastards are going to come up to me and, you know, double dip a chip from my goddamn chips and salsa and try to threaten me, for Christ's sake, as if they own the joint. And these are Homeland Security bastards. I'm not stopping! I'm not stopping, for Christ's sake. So, look. I told my wife to take the necessary precautions if anything were to happen to me to get out to the capitalist army through the variety of different mediums uh, uh, to keep on going. All right? I'm not kidding around. It's getting that goddamn serious. I mean, didn't you hear today another DNC staffer killed in a, quote, apartment explosion, a, quote, natural gas explosion, for Christ's sake? I mean, give me a break. I mean, how many more DNC staffers have to be killed before people start realizing that this election, this presidential election, is deadly serious, man? Why do you think I came back to this son of a bitch? I mean, I knew how important this goddamn uh, presidential election was, folks. And you, you, you need to realize that. You need to realize that, man. I'm not joking around, folks. I'm not kidding around. So look, I don't really care what happens to me at this point in time. The bottom line is, is that the capitalists, we have to continue going forward. As you can see, and as I've been stating for since 2008 on this particular venue and a variety of different other venues for years before that, that we are witnessing a systematic takeover of global proportions that embrace a communist-style rule, a totalitarian-style rule, a bureaucratic-style rule. And you see, folks, this is why I come back, because I know this information that I'm telling you. I mean, look, folks, if you've been listening to me, haven't you noticed that I've been saying things that now all of a sudden, within like a couple of weeks, a month later, all of a sudden it becomes news, it becomes the main spotlight, all of a sudden, I mean, I was the first one on any media talking and saying and making the claim, because I know, I mean, wink, wink, Seth Conrad Rich was the DNC leaker. I mean, I could go on and on. I mean, look, I, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. What I'm saying is, is that this little show here, aside from all the other internet activity that yours truly is partaking in outside this show and this uh, social arena, uh, you know, it, it's getting me some heat, to say the least, all right? It's getting me some uh, heat, to say the least, but you know what? I don't give a crap, all right? I mean, l the bottom line is, folks, is you know who's taking the ultimate risk? Donald Trump. Donald Trump, for Christ's sake. I mean, not only has this man lost tremendous amounts of money financially, not only pouring money into his own campaign, but he's lost sponsorships, he's lost TV revenue, he's lost uh, uh, deals because of this presidential run, for Christ's sake. On top of which, folks, he is a wanted man. You think that this man doesn't have attempts at his life? You don't think that this man has somebody tasting his food for him before he eats it? Uh, you, you don't think that this man uh, you, you know, is making sure that he double and triples inspects his plane to make sure that it doesn't conveniently fall out of the sky? I mean, I'm serious. I mean, Donald Trump has taken the ultimate risk, the ultimate risk, and he is sacrificing himself, he's sacrificing his fortune, he is sacrificing his whole legacy to save this country, to save America from the bureaucrats, from the international institutionalists. And if, by God, if Donald Trump is willing to do that, if Donald Trump is willing to say, you know what, I care about this country so goddamn much, I don't care what happens to me. This country gave me so much greatness, so much richness, so much great life experience. I'm willing to sacrifice myself, sacrifice myself in an attempt to save this country. And, folks, whenever I look at Donald Trump, that's what I see. Every time I see this man, I know that I'm happy to see that there's nothing wrong with him, that he is perfectly healthy, folks. Because, by God, do you understand that politics is now a serious business? It's been serious. 
I mean, do you remember Andrew Breitbart, for Christ's sake? Andrew Breitbart, man, probably one of the greatest, greatest right-wing media personalities that ever walked the face of the planet. Understand how to use the the media against him against themselves. Excuse me. Knew how to agitate the media to put the spotlight on him or his particular cause or the right wing's strife. What happened to Andrew Breitbart? Huh? What happened to the only witness to see him die? What happened to the coroner that uh, investigated the autopsy, who, who, who did the autopsy on his body? What happened to them all? They're dead. They're all dead. Did you see Dan Bongino, to, uh, I don't know what it was, Jesus Christ, yesterday, day before yesterday? This is an ex-Secret Service agent. I believe he tried to run for Congress here recently. He was unfortunately unsuccessful. Ex-Secret Service agent, 12 years, you had this gay black asshole, Don Lemon, all right, scolding, trying to shame a 12-year Secret Service agent, saying, shame on you that you don't think that Donald Trump's Second Amendment comment was anything violent, and that he doesn't know, I mean, I just, it's absurd, man, did y'all see that? Did y'all see Dan Bongino? If y'all haven't seen it, put Dan Bongino, Don Lemon, one of the most disgusting exchanges I've ever seen. But you know what it proves to me, all right? You know what it proves to me, for Christ's sake? It proves to me that Don Lemon is what I've been talking about as it relates to D-Ray. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, I'm talking about this homosexual black demographic, all right, like this, you know, and I'm not saying all, you know, gay black folks are encompassed in the circle, but, you know, there's a lot of traits between D. Ray and Don Lemon. Let me give you case in point. Uh, They are willingly, completely willing to sell people out for their own Uh, self-worth. I mean, literally lie to people's faces so that they can bloviate their own egos and their own images to the public. I mean, Don Lemon trying to say that Dan Bongino, 12-year Secret Service agent, doesn't know what a real threat is, even though the guy was a Secret Service agent, he would be investigating such threats. This psychopathic black homosexual mentality. And I'm not talking about like those that are in the hood. I mean, you know, of course, uh, you know, they they come from a different uh, demographic, different socioeconomic situation. So I'm talking about like these supposed educated black gay, uh, this this, this stereotype that is now encompassing in the media. I mean, I'm trying to say this as delicately as possible. But I'm saying, like, you know, that that black, gay, sociopathic, psychopathic, pompous, uh, soulless mentality. I mean, this is what encapsulates a Don Lemon and a D. Ray McKesson. That's why they are completely shameless in selling out themselves, selling out their own people, selling out whoever, as long as their image is continuously put out before the people. I mean, these people are egomaniacs. And that's why, I mean, I have to take a step back whenever I hear somebody that is a homosexual and claims to be some intellectual. I'm sorry. All right? Because, you know, it it, it encapsulates the same personality trait. You know, you talk to these homosexuals that are supposed intellectual. I'm not saying all of them either. You know, you got Milo's. You know, you got these, you've got people that aren't, of that caliber, but I'm talking this, you know, I don't know, you know, I try to figure this out all the time, folks, I'm in Austin, Texas, I I see a lot of homosexuals all the time, I try to think what encapsulates such a sociopathic mentality that they are willing to sell out their own people, other people, children, women, whoever, to bloviate their own image in the public eye, uh, to enrich themselves, In D-Ray's case, he's leading his own people into hell, for Christ's sake. All right? I mean, he has the spotlight right now 
to be able to educate his people into confronting the police in a legal ease capacity. You see, that's the problem with most black folks. And I was going to get to this on the last show. I didn't get to it. Black folks need to understand that, yeah, okay, maybe there is a certain stereotype as it relates to police uh, stereotyping you for a stop or stereotyping you for a pat down or whatever the case might be. But as soon as you're approached, the last thing you want to do is start acting like your Snoop Dogg and cursing like a goddamn uh, imbecilic delinquent. You see, what you need to do is you need to understand the legal process within your municipality. You need to ask what it is that you're doing, and if you're being detained, and if they don't answer the question, then you don't answer questions. Because a, a cop cannot stop you unless, of course, you're in a motor vehicle, which falls under a completely other jurisdiction you got to read your own state's laws on that but if you're walking down the damn street and there's a goddamn cop that comes up to you for no reason you are not legally obligated to talk to that person as a matter of fact look i am not against the cops i actually think you know we need law and order but i'm not naive to the fact that there isn't an element of police brutality and when i say brutality i use that in the most light way possible I'm not saying that it's the police's duty to be a bully enforcement group. But what I am saying is this, that I don't talk to on-duty police officers because I know how they are trained. Police officers that are on duty are trained to make cases. That's why police officers that are on duty will never answer a question They'll only ask questions, and if you respond to their questions with asking questions, that's when you're going to start getting them agitated, and when they start getting agitated, that's when you can start pulling the legalese and saying, well, sir, I am actually obliging your situation, but you, unfortunately, are now encroaching upon my particular right because now you are illegally detaining me unless – you are accusing me of doing a crime or accusing me about to do a crime or have evidence that I could possibly be just about doing a crime. I mean, you know, these are the kind of lessons that the black community needs to listen to and understand. But they don't. They don't. And D. Ray McKesson and Don Lemon and these black gay, uh, you know, obvious leaders that are in power right now they got spotlights they could they got a lot of black folks listening to them why aren't they teaching them this why aren't they teaching them legal ease in an attempt to try to you know not be so confrontational with the police for christ's sake man i mean this is very simple i mean d ray mckesson i mean he's got george soros funding he's got a lot of money uh you know uh funding him around for these stupid protests I mean, why does he get on a damn bullhorn and tell them how to confront the police in a legalese fashion so that if something does happen in a police brutality situation, that you are justified in whatever the outcome of the case may be? If you are a law-abiding citizen and you approach the police in a legalese capacity and that police officer abuses their authority, well, then, by God, that... that police officers will be prosecuted, will be fired, and you will possibly be generously rewarded on the city's dime, for Christ's sake. All right? But by God, I'm telling you, you don't hear one iota of that. You know what you hear from D. Ray McKesson and Don Lemon? Agitating an undereducated population of black folk. That's what I hear every single day out of these sellouts. And I try to I try to be psychological and understand why Don Lemon and a D. Ray McKesson would do this. I mean, why would they do? Why would they not want to help their community? Why would they want to purposely agitate their undereducated communities into violence, into self-destruction? I mean, you notice, folks, that every time black folks riot, they, they riot in their own community. I mean, they burn down their own black businesses. They burn down their own black uh, economy, for Christ's sake. They destroy their own neighborhoods. I mean, this is what Don Lemon and D. Ray McKesson are doing, for Christ's sake, man. And here I am. I'm getting visited by fucking Homeland Security. 
folks. I'm going to be completely honest with you. My wife is beside herself. She's scared. You know, uh, I mean, this was, I need a drink, man. Give me my drink, for Christ's sake. Look, I'm sorry for cursing, folks, but once again, I mean, I I just, I get angry that, you know, you got people like D. Ray McKesson agitating a population of undereducated people into violence. And, uh, you know, this idiot is going around the country being funded by who the hell knows who, for Christ's sake. All right? And then you got Don Lemon purposely misleading through his, I don't even want to call it journalism. I call it, you know, suggestive hypnosis. You know, and, and the CNN knows exactly what they're doing, all right? They put a black face on there, and they make sure that, uh, you know, he does what he's told, agitate the uh, undereducated black folks, and uh, make sure to agitate them into violence, and then put a microphone in their face while they're doing the violence just to uh, rub it in the faces of everybody that much more, for Christ's sake. I mean, oh, my God. Anyway, folks, look, uh, it's supposed to be a baller Friday, man. It's supposed to be a, it's supposed to be a, you know, good day, happy day, you know. It's supposed to be a damn baller Friday, you know what I mean? But, man, it, it's hard, man. I mean, now, I mean, I'm looking over my shoulder. I'm looking over both shoulders now, you know what I mean? I'm serious. Now I'm like, I'm looking over both shoulders. I'm looking out my window, for Christ's sake. I'm not kidding, man. I'm serious. I mean, look, it's bad enough that they came up to me and tried to intimidate me and, and crap like that, man. I, you know what really pisses me off? This idiot ate a chip and then double dipped the chip like a bureaucratic asshole. I mean, that's what you, you know, that's a bureaucratic move. That was a bureaucratic move, for Christ's sake, man. He did that on purpose. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to intimidate you. Yeah, look at this, huh? Are you going to eat it now, you stupid bastard? I mean, that's insulting, man. That's insulting. I mean, aside from it being unprofessional from for some Homeland Security person to be doing such a thing, first and foremost, all right, it's insulting as a man. It's insulting as a man because you know what he was trying to do? He was trying to show his authority and, yeah, look, I'm not going to do this because what he was trying to do was tempt me to go and, and fucking knock his teeth out. That's what he was trying to tempt me to do. That's what he was trying to tempt me to do. But you see, if I did that, I mean, just imagine what kind of charge they would have thrown at me for beating a goddamn Homeland Security bastard up, man, in a goddamn taco bar. I mean, give me a break. I'm not joking, man. It's insulting, man. It's, just, it's insulting as a man. Anyway. And somebody's saying, uh, you had chips and dip 
uh, chips and salsa for breakfast fake? Hey, idiot, I'm in southwest Texas, asshole. All right? I mean, this, this is where we, we serve Tex-Mex out here, you son of a bitch. I mean, you can get a freaking uh, a bean and cheese breakfast taco out here in this son of a bitch for like 78 cents in some of these parts. All right? I mean, seriously, you go into some of these goddamn Mexican taco bars, they give you a freaking uh, uh, chip and dip complimentary. All right? Just because y'all idiots are in other parts of the world out there, y'all are not cultured and don't know what the hell you're talking about as it relates to chips and salsa, well, then shove it up your ass, all right? I'm a cultured man. I've told you this time and time again. I'm a melting pot of friendship. I mean, look, that just goes to show you that, you know, having tacos for breakfast, I mean, it just goes to show you how in tuned I am with the Hispandex community, all right? I'm serious, man. I mean, I'm, I'm a cultured man here, for Christ's sake. So don't sit here and give me this crap. All right? I'm, 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 not, I'm telling you, I'm a cultured man out here, right? So, you know, for you people that are saying, well, I, I, I don't have uh, chips and salsa for breakfast, so it's fake. You, you are so stupid. Come over here to Austin, Texas, or anywhere below Austin, Texas, and go into any goddamn Mexican restaurant out here and see if you, they, they don't throw goddamn chips and dips in your freaking face, all right? You stupid idiot. Jesus Christ, man. And you know what? I, I'm so cultured for this baller Friday. What, what, what should I have? Maybe maybe I'll honor uh, the Wops by having a spaghetti and meatball or something, huh? Or, you know, maybe I'll, I'll honor the Camel Jockeys by having something pickled, you know? Or, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll call one of my blacks and say, uh, you know, hook it up with the uh, soul food, brother, you know? Some of that, uh, some of that soul food, baby. Some of that uh, collard greens, baby. Some of that uh, okra. You know what I mean? Some of that, uh, some of that deep, deep, deep down southern fried chicken, baby. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can do, I can do all. I'm cultured, baby. I'm from South Texas. Or I could, you know, uh, go do some Mexican thing again. I, I could, I could call one of my freaking uh, Hispandexes. And maybe we can go out and have, uh, you know, one of these ex- exotic Mexican meals or something, all right? Jesus Christ. I'm not joking, man. I mean, look, uh, you know, if I called one of my Hispanic Hispanics, uh, I- I'd probably say, hey, look, why don't you cook up some of that, uh, what, what, what do they eat over there, the fajitas? I don't mind a little bit of fajitas. I don't mind a little bit of that uh, 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 carne guisada. Carney Gay Sod is pretty goddamn good. Uh, who the hell else? I mean, I'm, I'm cultured man, all right? I am a cultured man. I'm sick and tired of you people trying to allude to the fact that I, I don't know, I'm some kind of a goddamn grand dragon or something, all right? Shut up. I'm a cultured man out here. Anyway, let's, let's move on, for Christ's sake. I'm tired of proving to you people that... Uh, I, I, when I speak, I don't speak from uh, a perspective of not uh, knowing other cultures. Or I know other cultures, all right? I know other cultures, baby. Or maybe I should go have some Oriental food, right? And, you know, the cool part about Oriental food is, like, you know, y- y- you know, you can, like, cruise the Orient and, like, get whatever kind of Oriental food you want. You want a little bit of Korea, you want a little bit of Jap food, you know, you want a little bit of, you know, yeah, you want a little bit of Thai. You want Thai? You get a little bit of Thai food. You know, you you, you get something, uh, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you just cruise the Orient, for Christ's sake, man. I love it. For I love it. I, I'm a cultured man. I'm telling you, you can tell a lot by a man as it relates to his uh, uh, cultural extensiveness by his cuisine. All right? I'm telling you that right now. Anyway, let's move on. I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about anything you want to talk about. All right, this is a Baller Friday free format edition. And let me tell you something. I am especially not going to be intimidated by some Homeland Security bureaucratic asshole who's going to double dip my goddamn shit. I want to see that scumbag. I want to leave the office, and I want to see his face. I want to see that stupid bureaucratic face. 
I would have done something, folks. I swear to God, if my wife was right there, for Christ's sake, I didn't want her to see me in such a violent episode, for Christ's sake. But by God, I couldn't sleep last night. I wanted to punch this guy's face in, for Christ's sake, man. I wanted to knock his teeth out. I wanted to break his ribs, for Christ's sake, man. I want to punch him in the stomach. I want to repeatedly punch him in the stomach, and I want to hear him gasp for air. I want to... I want to hear him gasp for air, for Christ's sake. I want to... I want to see... I just can't wait to see that bastard's face. I can't wait. I, yeah, yeah. You don't even understand. You don't even understand. God damn it. I hope that son of a bitch is listening too. I don't care how he's listening. I hope he's goddamn listening. Here, hold on. Give him my. Give him my. Hey, hey, you scumbag. If you're goddamn listening, I'm talking to the asshole that. Confronted me and my wife yesterday, Homeland Security bastard. If you're listening, and you're listening right now, you meet me after I do this show. You meet me on my walk to to my freaking apartment. You in my condo. You freak me out there. You meet me. I want to see your face. I challenge you to go out there. I want to see your stupid, stinking, sniveling, bureaucratic, double-dipping face. I want to see your face. All right, if you're listening, go, go meet me out there. Go meet me out there. Uh, I'm not joking. You better be listening. Uh, you think I'm intimidated for Christ's sake? I don't care. You meet me out there. Mano a mano, you son of a bitch. All right, don't bring your goddamn weapons. Don't bring nothing. I want to smash your, your face. Your face. Ugh. I want to smash your face for besmirching my manhood. Nobody does that. Do you understand that? Nobody does that and doesn't get a trip to the hospital. Nobody does that to me and doesn't leave on a stretcher. Nobody. Nobody does that to me. I don't care if you're goddamn Homeland Security, you son of a Nobody. Ugh. Nobody does that. Uh, I'm not joking. If you're listening to me, you son of a bitch, you you meet me out there. You meet me out in the streets of Austin. You you see me. You look me in my face. I dare you. God damn it. I God damn dare you. I dare you. I want you to. I want you to. I'm challenging you to. I dare you to. I dare you to. Nobody does that to me, man. I'm telling you, I'm not joking, folks. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. Nobody does that to me and doesn't get a trip to the hospital. Nobody does that to me, man. Nobody does that to me. Uh, I gotta calm down. Uh, I gotta calm down, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sorry, man. I'm just, I, I just can't let this go, man. I can't let it go. I can't let it go. I mean, you don't, you don't besmirch a man's manhood, man. I'm telling you this right, goddamn now. You don't besmirch a man's manhood. Oh, oh God, my freaking chest is hurting. But I don't care. I don't care. Uh, uh. Oh, my God, my heart. Uh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry I'm going off keister here, man, but I'm really bothered by this, man. I mean, I'm serious. Jesus Christ, I'm sweating up a storm here. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Give me my drink, man. Give me my drink. There he is. All right. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'm, 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 the breaths are coming back. All right, I'm, I'm calming down, folks. I'm sorry, uh, you know, f- for all the uh, the dead air here. All right, I'm, I'm calm now. I'm calm. All right, I'm calm now. I'm just, I'm just so goddamn angry, folks. I'm, I'm going to be completely candid with you here, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very angry. I mean, I cannot believe this son of a bitch thought he could do that to me. You know, I, I, I just, I cannot believe that that, that son of a bitch thought he could do that to me. Nobody does that to me, you know? Nobody does that to me without getting some kind of physical damage implemented on them. Do you understand that? I mean, nobody does that to me. Nobody! Nobody does that to me! Oh, 
God, man. I just can't let it go, man. Let me have a goddamn... I'm almost out of my drink, man. God damn it. Uh, uh. All right, man, I'm, I'm going to calm down here, folks. You know what I'm going to do? I, I I don't know whether to continue the show. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do, man. All right. I don't know what it. I don't know what to do, man. All right. I mean, I'm just so goddamn angry. I mean, you got me. I mean, you feel it, right, folks? I mean, you feel this goddamn anger. I just can't. I I just can't let it go. I can't let it go. I can't let it go, man. Freaking Homeland Security. Come and meet me outside. Come and meet me outside. Oh, my God. Oh my God! I mean, g- g- give me, give me a freaking, give me a handkerchief or something, engineer. God damn it! I'm sweating all over the place. Good God! Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! Here, here, yeah, thanks, engineer. Oh, Jesus Christ! Ah, ah, Jesus Christ! I'm sorry, folks. My apologies, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, all right? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Christ, man. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. All right. Let me calm down. Let me calm my ass down. I'm sorry. All right, I'm sorry. I am trying to calm down. People are telling me to calm down on Twitter. I'm trying to calm down, man. I'm trying to calm down. Oh, Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Look, I know there's a lot of people uh, that are on Twitter asking me why I'm so upset. Look, folks. I was approached yesterday by goddamn Homeland Security bastards. Uh, And they were trying to intimidate me, you know? Trying to say, hey, ghost, good. And then sitting at my goddamn table telling me that, you know, the capitalist army and uh, I'm being monitored and I'm being monitored and that I should stop doing my, quote, hobby. And then this son of a bitch takes my chip, takes the chip. He not only dips the chip, he double dips it, man. He double dips the damn chip. Now, look, I know that some of you people are probably thinking your heads, well, that's not very, that's not a big deal, ghost. Yes, it freaking is. This man was besmirching my manhood. And you see, my wife was there, and I, I, I could not take, I could not take the freaking uh, glass that was, I, it's smashing on his face. I couldn't do anything of the sort. I couldn't do anything of the sort. I mean, I would be... Uh, God, I wish they would have approached me by myself. I wish they would have approached me by myself because I, I, I would have taken a swing at that son of a bitch. <clears throat> you know, the, I would have taken a glass and I was sipping the, uh, my beverage on it. Would, I would have smashed it in his face. Anyway, folks, look, I I don't know what else to do, folks. I'm a little pissed off. I'm a little angry, for Christ's sake, all right? As a matter of fact, I actually want to just uh, conclude this broadcast and go home to my wife and kick back and have a decent meal, for Christ's sake, because, by God, I mean, given the fact that, you know, you got so many DNC staffers dropping dead and, you know, miraculously dying, for Christ's sake, it's, you know, one should cherish every goddamn moment of the goddamn life that one has, especially if they're politically active, for Christ's sake, man.